Hello viewers, in today's video we will be covering response analysis or so called spectral analysis of uh, force oscillations. So uh, it is based upon uh, the principle of superposition which applies to linear systems only and according to this uh, principle the response to a given uh, number of excitations can be computed independently and then the results can be added to determine the aggregate response. So we will be exploiting this principle in conjunction with the Fourier theorem for determining the response to non-harmonic functions. So in this case I have taken a square wave function for the force being implied to this mass. So the system comprises of these three elements that is the stiffness, the damping and the mass element. So the response uh, comes in the form of instantaneous displacement given by this small case, uh, small x. Now uh, there is no counterpart for this kind of a principle for nonlinear systems. So that is why the understanding of linear systems has developed far beyond than that of the nonlinear systems. Now we have already covered that uh, the steady state response that is given by the particular integral uh, uh, for this particular uh, differential equation. So that will be applying to the individual harmonics. So in this case uh, uh, the way we already covered it this force function was the harmonic one. So when we have a non-harmonic force function we will be uh, applying this particular uh, expression recursively for all the individual harmonics. So here is the analysis uh, which has been uh, done uh, with reference to a square wave. So we have already covered uh, the Fourier analysis of a square wave. So the ith harmonic is uh, given by this expression and we also can recall that for square wave uh, we only had the odd terms of the harmonics. Now the corresponding uh, Guernier differential equation becomes like this that is corresponding to the ith harmonic. So let the corresponding response to the ith harmonic be given by this is lowercase x is uh, depicting the displacement and this uh, uppercase x i is depicting the amplitude of uh, the response to ith harmonic. So we have this i omega is the uh, frequency in radians per second of the ith harmonic t is the time we will be taking very small increments for doing a numerical analysis and phi i is the phase angle again in radians of the ith harmonic. So we differentiate this expression once and twice with respect to time to get these and we substitute these back into this first governing differential equation corresponding to the ith harmonic. Now because of these phase angles of pi by 2 and pi the vector polygon if we uh, subtract the inertia force from the spring force the vector polygon reduces to a triangle of this form where the inertia and spring force difference vector and the uh, damping vector they are always orthogonal and this hypotenuse is the amplitude of the external force component or in this case this is referring to the uh, corresponding uh, harmonic of the applied force function. So substituting there we get this expression we apply Pythagoras theorem to this triangle and from here we segregate the uh, expression for the amplitude of the ith harmonic. So this is what we get and likewise we get uh, the phase angle phi i which is the angle included between these two vectors here. So we get the expression for phi i also. Now we will be developing uh, a Microsoft Excel workbook for doing this analysis. So I will take you to that. I have just developed a seed kind of uh, a worksheet and uh, now I will just show you the values. So these are the input values here. So we for any particular system we can enter the amount of mass of course in kgs then stiffness in newtons per minute then the damping coefficient in newtons uh, second per minute uh, sorry newton second per meter and this is the amplitude of the externally applied force function. This is in newtons excitation frequency we enter in hertz here then these green uh, highlighted cells they contain the intermediate calculations so excitation frequency is converted into radians per second 
for all these cells that I'll be highlighting, you can just look at the formula bar to see the kind of expressions that I have entered. So we determine the excitation time period. There's nothing but the reciprocal of frequency. Then we decide on the time increment for uh, uh, generating the sine waves corresponding to individual harmonics. Now, because the harmonics will have uh, time periods shorter than that of the source function. So we nearly, uh, uh, we actually need a very high resolution in as far as the time increment is concerned. So as a starting value, I have uh, taken a time increment of the time period divided by 500. The higher the resolution, the larger the number of harmonics that we can analyze. So I have taken this time increment, you can see the expression in the formula bar, then we start with time at zero and we'll be adding this time increment to the time. So you type in the expression, uh, this is equal to A20 plus I have to use static reference for uh, A18. So I type A$18 because I don't want the row reference to change as we copy this expression downwards. Okay, so in the next column here we have the natural frequency. This is given by square root of K by M. Uh, you can see the values in the formula bar. Frequency ratio is omega by omega n. Then critical damping coefficient is twice the uh, product of mass and natural frequency. Okay, this is the, sorry, damping factor. There's small spelling mistake. I'll just correct it. So damping factor or damping ratio is given as a ratio of C by CC. Then we start with the first harmonic. Then because it's a square wave, the next one will be uh, the third harmonic. So we can here type and the subsequent column is equal to C7 plus 2. So we'll be getting the calculations corresponding to the third harmonic, okay. Then we have amplitudes of the individual harmonics. So I am using the subscript I, so as not to confuse with N which might refer to natural frequency. So I'm using uh, the subscript I for the individual harmonics. So Y1, this is the expression. Uh, then we have uh, omega 1 or omega i you can say this is expression so I am taking this, all these uh, formulae cells they are taking reference to this harmonic which is given here in cell C7 okay I think I mistakenly hit the wrong key okay so now here you can see all of them are referring to this harmonic number Okay, then let's move on quickly to the frequency ratio and then to the phase angle. So, uh, phase angle again in, in case uh, this turns out to be negative, so we have to add pi. So, I have used a logical test here. If, if the value is greater than or equal to 0, then retain the same value or else you add pi to that. That you always have to do with the phase angle. So, amplitude of uh, response to the ith harmonic is given by this expression. You can see the arithmetic expression in the B column and here we have the actual formula. So, you can just have a quick look at it. Okay, so now we have the particular integral forms. So, here comes the expression where we'll be developing the sine wave. So, we start with time t equal to 0. Now everything is in place, let's just copy these formula with the thanks due to mixed referencing style so I can quickly get the values here and I can also copy these. If you develop the sheet correctly, you will also be able to do the same. Now uh, because we have taken a pretty fine time increment so we can move ahead to calculating a large number of harmonics. Okay, let's make it 50, 7, 8, 9, 50, so, okay, so let's go up to, because we are getting only odd numbers of harmonics, so let's see how many we have analyzed so far, so this sheet is now comprising of 27 harmonics, I think that should be fair enough, but what's most important is, uh, the phase angles, because uh, for the lower frequency, because omega by omega n is quite small, for the smaller, uh, the starting harmonics, this phase angle will be close to zero, but later on, it should reach 180 degrees. It is very important uh, 
that we make sure that in our analysis the phase angle does undergo a change as I'll just show you when we start with the simulation. Do uh, keep note of this particular uh, aspect that the phase angles must change in the range of harmonics that we have taken into account. So where it will undergo that change will depend upon the starting frequency omega by omega n. So we have a number crunching machine here. So we just copy this row and go down. I would like to have at least around 4000 uh, values. Okay, so okay, let's just paste it here. It does all the calculations. And here this chart is showing uh, the first harmonic. Uh, not harmonic, but the response to the first harmonic. So the phase angle is pretty small, so it is starting almost from the zero here. The subsequent responses will have, each response will have frequency equal to that of the harmonic and because these are steady state responses, so their amplitudes are not functions of time. So you can go to any of these harmonics and then just see how the graph changes. So this is how, uh, I'll, I'll just show you, let's see how the phase angles are changing. So around here, the phase angle is now approaching pi. So let's just plot this particular one. Okay, so you can see the change in phase angle. Though amplitude has become very small, but you can still make out the change in the phase angle. Okay, so now the next important thing for us to do is uh, we just plot the sum of these harmonics. Then we'll start manipulating. So here in this first column, I have plotted the sum of harmonics. So I'll bring uh, this uh, uh, the, uh, the chart data to this particular column. Yeah. But before that, just have a quick look at the expression here once again. So here's the expression. And here for the sum of harmonics, I have just added the expression, okay, from C20 to AA20. So you can really go beyond uh, what all is given, okay, it's taking till here. So these two columns are of no use or we can change the formula to include them. So instead of AA, let's type here AC or AD. You can go beyond the blank cells won't matter. So, okay, let's do it. Now let's see what happens when we impose a square wave function on a system. So this is it. This is precisely what's expected. So when the square wave it strikes like a hammer, the system undergoes oscillations as per the natural frequency. Then the square wave is withdrawn again. It undergoes oscillations. And do keep in mind, we are not taking into account the complementary function which accounts for the transient. This is the steady state response of the system. However, because the frequency imposed is uh, pretty different from the natural frequency. Natural frequency is much higher than the imposed frequency. So even in the steady state response, the system behaves like this. An interesting thing is, if we do not take into account the higher harmonics, C, I'm just in a crude fashion, I'm going to delete these. Uh, okay, let's say I delete all these responses to make them zero. This is what we are getting. Okay. Let's keep a few more. When you develop a sheet of your own, uh, then you can do all this uh, manipulation and see the effects. I'll just show you what to expect. Till here, you don't actually see what the response should be like because the phase angles are of all these harmonics are pretty close to zero. So we go beyond. See, this is where the phase angle is beginning to change and all of a sudden you get the kind of responses that we should expect. So that is important. Now, when we have all the harmonics, the response gets even further fine tuned. Now the actual uh, 
value of this analysis lies in the fact when the excitation frequency is given other ranges for example if i make it uh, pretty close to omega n so where is our omega n so omega n is around 63 radians per second so i increase this is in hertz so i make it 20 okay the problem is uh, this time becomes uh, series becomes less so we'll change mass so i want the system frequency to reduce so that it becomes comparable to the excitation frequency so we'll have to increase this mass we make it 1 kg now you can see the effect we make it 2 kgs you can see the effect again we make it 4 kgs yes now you can see the effect again okay let's increase the system frequency somewhat make it 1 okay if we reduce the mass again 0.5 see the effect earlier this was 0.5 now we have made it 1 let's make it 2 no this we won't do because my time series is less okay so mass we make it uh, 2 now you can see the response you can make it 5 the system is becoming heavier i make it 10 now this is the kind of thing which you can expect we are giving a square wave but the system is undergoing oscillations which are kind of sinusoidal in nature not exactly but kind of so as we make it heavier the mass tends to undergo sinusoidal oscillations so if resonance will occur you see frequency ratio is now approaching one the amplitude will increase this becomes quite high because we are very close to resonant frequency we can bring the amplitude down by increasing the damping coefficient okay it will absorb energy i make it 100 this is very high damping now but if you increase the mass anyway beyond this so we'll have surpassed the resonant peak and the amplitude comes down again so i hope uh, this kind of simulation will actually help you develop a deeper understanding into the response analysis and will also enable you to carry out this kind of analysis on your own thanks for watching